Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name is Andy, my channel is Finding Value. If you feel like participating and joining in a channel that is very interactive, uh, please subscribe to it. I'm trying to always get uh, undervalued investment opportunities in front of your guys' eyes. Uh, these are long-term plays, they're not short-term movements. I'm in it for an investment for the next five to 10 years during this next commodity bull market. Today, I wanna to talk about the uranium market and some, some things that, are, that make it unique. So let's, go, let's jump in here. I'm gonna talk about the uranium market and I'll call this the most important, but fundamental analysis, it, it's okay, but it changes rapidly in commodity companies when the price of what you sell changes. We saw silver double in price in a few weeks, which drastically changed the fundamentals of a silver company. We've seen oil double in price in about six months, and that changed the companies that sell oil's balance sheets dramatically. The most important thing in, the, in a commodity sector for the fundamentals of these companies is the actual price of the commodity itself. If you've been on this channel, you've heard me say that before. And... I was watching a Rick Rule uh, interview. I was listening to him, and he said he had reduced his holdings because the companies got ahead of themselves in uranium. And he said that he's reversed. Well, he didn't say that he's going to reverse, but he, now he says that he's, again, he's going to accumulate aggressively over the next four weeks, the uranium mining companies, uh, because he's, he thinks they could take off. Now, he, he makes the claim that uranium companies are overvalued given the price of uranium. And then in the next sentence or two, he then says that the junior uranium companies could go up two to 500% if the price of uranium goes to 50 or $60 a pound. And the one thing I want to make sure or, or say is that, you know, that that's 50, $60 a pound is, is a must. And, and that time isn't necessarily known. Like we know it has to get there in order to turn on the uranium. Uh, producers. We just don't know the exact timing of it. Now, I just went over and said, hey, look, we've got oil that went up double in six months. We had silver that moonshotted. Uh, in, in, in weeks, it went up that fast, uh, where it went in, and it doubled in weeks. Uranium is no different. So what I am scared of is that you can't look at the fundamentals per se and say, well, these are overvalued. And then turn around and say, well, we need $50 or $60 a pound to make this work. If we need $50, $60 a pound, and the junior companies are going to go up 2 to 500% in price, why wouldn't you just buy them and hold on? Like that, That's kind of my, my mentality and my thought process. Why, why would you... Why, I, I, it, it got me a little bit confused. That's all. And the takeaway here that I have... And that I want you guys to have is with little uranium being mined and the companies buying the rest of the uranium on the market, I, I think he's kind of playing Russian roulette by not being invested fully in the uranium market of the positions that he wants. And I think he realized that uh, pretty quickly. The commodity price sets the fundamentals of the company along with money flows. Uh, fundamentals of a, of a company's balance sheet do not move the the commodity price itself, I mean, if that makes sense. The company's fundamentals are based off of the commodity price itself. And these money flows, it's, it's difficult to time this uh, and, and see how things are going to react. We could, we could obviously pull back here. Very well could. Uh, no one knows the, the future. But if we know that the price has to go up at some point, and we know that the, the symmetry, it's, it's a very asymmetric bet, uh, what I do is I tend to buy and hold and wait for the price movement. And if I if I have to go and, and move up and down between a 30 or 40% move, uh, I just accumulate more over time. That's, that's how I um, view it. And the price moves here, we've seen spectacular moves in oil, lumber, copper, palladium, silver, platinum. We've seen it all over the place in all these commodities. I also think that a spectacular move will occur in uranium uh, as well, and that will that could drastically change the balance sheets of the uranium companies. And guess what? No one says that the price will stop at fifty or sixty dollars a pound. That is required to turn on the majority of the companies. It doesn't mean that it's just going to stop there. 
What if people panic and they need uranium, but the uranium contracts get filled across the sector? What, what, what if hedge funds come in and start buying up more uranium and drive prices much higher in this small little sector? And, and you have to keep in mind too, that movement creates emotion. Price movements in any sector generates emotions with people and the FOMO kicks in and then the momentum people uh, show up on the doorstep. Price movements could also trigger fear in utilities to lock in and do, do, do more contracts. What if it all happens at once? Which we've seen in a lot of the other sectors in the commodities. I think it's more risky to, to not be in the sector uh, and, and stay invested in these than it is to try and time the market. And that's what I did wrong last time, is I tried timing the market. And what I'm doing now is I'm just accumulating and holding on. So what I'm doing is uh, I'm finding my favorite companies and cost averaging into them at every good opportunity I get. I'm holding on to my positions that I already have and I'm waiting. I'm riding the ups and downs because when this thing launches, I think it could be a pretty quick move to the upside. And I don't wanna miss that. So when you look at this, you have to look at this bet as an asymmetric bet. Your downside, let's say, is 30 or 40% a downside. And some of these are so volatile that you're gonna be seeing that anyway. But what if your upside's two, three, four, five, six, seven hundred percent? Uh, it could even be 10, a 10X. It could be a thousand percent upside if, if everyone kind of rolls in. Remember, this is a different, it's a market that, it, it's, it's different. It wasn't like in the 80s or 90s. Uh, the information didn't flow from person to person very quickly. Now, everybody can, can learn this stuff so quickly and the information flows so fast that when people see the uranium market take off, it's like everyone's going to know about it and they're all going to pile in at the same time. So what I'm doing is I'm buying it when nobody really wants it. It's When, when things go down, people... They don't. They feel discouraged uh, emotionally. They they feel down and they don't want to buy anything. They're not motivated to buy it. Uh, they don't want to look at it. And the one thing that I do is I I try not to get down. I try to stay motivated. I try to stay focused. I try to stick to my plan and I cost average in when no one else is doing it. We could see a pullback in uranium at some point, and I'm going to take advantage of it. I'm definitely going to take advantage of it. I'm going to continue to pile into the sector uh, because I think it is a good value. And I think the potential and the symmetry, the asymmetric bet is massive. You could have a massive upside to limited downside risk. So uh, I continue to stay positive on the on the uranium sector. I'm always looking at the charts. I'm looking for, I'm hoping for a pullback because uh, I'd like to move a little bit more money into it uh, over time. If you guys like this content, give me a thumbs up. Let me know what questions you guys have. Leave it in the comment section. Love to hear what you guys have. And thank you for listening. This is Finding Value.